Let's talk to Sean Richards. He's from Not A Yes Man Economics. Uh, very good morning to you, young Sean. Morning. Right, this is my soapbox corner. OK, you've got exactly a maximum of eight minutes. What's on your mind this morning? Let's kick you off with the banks. OK, well, I mean, I think it's pretty clear cut. Another 500 million provision. This is US dollars for RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, this morning. And this is something that is just an ongoing beat. If we go back in time to, I think, one of the worst aspects of this whole thing was, of course, their rights issue. Yep. Back in April 2008, so next Which month, the bell. that'll be a decade for that, past. And, and this is, the whole thing is just symptomatic of a whole spell here where we're fed all the news on like a drip feed. We never actually get the truth until quite a long time later. Now, 10 years is quite a long time. People have had families, kids have grown up in that spell. And, and this, is, this is the problem. This is one of my sort of issues with this whole era, which is the concept of kicking the can into the future and then everything will be all right. Except we keep collecting the can again. And we're now 10 years down the road, it's another 500 million for RBS. The UK taxpayer finds themselves in a position where the share price is about half what they paid for it. So that's not anywhere near getting out of it. So we find ourselves in quite a mess. Then the next step is, if we move on to the legal system, there was this case overnight of the people that I think of fraudulently put themselves up to be like the DVLA, selling driving licences, this sort of thing. They, between them, seem to have got 35 years. Yet as we go round the whole banking sector, has there been 35 years inside in the whole lot? Um, and if we move to Paul Flowers, the so-called Crystal Methodist, I don't know if other people have read the um, FCA report yesterday, there doesn't seem to be any mention at all of destroying a bank, whereas ringing a premium rate chat line is apparently enough to get you banned from the city. Yeah. So how, how does that work? So just roughly off the top of my head, at least there was somewhere around two billion went west with the co-op bank. Apparently that doesn't matter. Yeah, what are these like, I don't know, two quid a minute or something? How does that work? Even if he'd been on there for the whole term of his chairmanship, would have been far less, wouldn't it? So this, to my mind, just symbolizes what a mess we're in. And in some respects, there's no point whining about the past because that's gone. OK, so you take that critique. But then how are we going to do any better in the future? Unless there's some sort of system that we sit down and say, I've made a mistake, I'm going to do better next time. But aren't the banks, the regulators, cleaning everything up? Well, they tell us that, but they told us that before, didn't they? And we end up with the problem of what's called regulatory capture, where the bank, the, excuse me, things like the FSA, the PRA, end up full of people from the banks. So, you know, this is something uh, fans um, like me, the series, yes, Prime Minister, that wrote this sort of thing a lot. That people, the right sort of person was appointed to this, which, of course, is exactly the wrong sort of person. And on and on the saga goes. So what's the answer? Actual genuine reform. I think we, we did need to let some of the banks go so that there was an actual sign that there was a failure. But in terms of when you studied economics at university, O level, A level, whatever, OK, was... Do you, let the, do you let the weaker hands basically pass on? Well, I think there has to be some of that in the end, because otherwise you end up where we are now with so many zombie banks, zombie companies. It's all very well bailing something out. And I'm not saying that there haven't been some gains from this, for example, the fact that the unemployment situation's improved because companies rolled on. But the catch is that we see in other areas where people complain, say, about the productivity numbers, well, a lot of the reason for that is that places that should have been moved on are just rumbling on and going nowhere. And then these things explode, moving out of the banking sector, things like Carillion, in terms of the infrastructure area. It seems like they were rolling on with the same model. Now, this is the problem. Once the establishment gets into these things, it feeds out into other countries. If you remember back in the day, RBS was advising the government. So these things are seen as a model of how to behave, not how not to behave. OK, so let me put it in another way then, moving forward. If interest rates, inflation, 10-year um, money all tick up and we have some sort of major correction, what are the central banks and the banks, what position are they in now? Well, it poses them a lot of issues. For example, their own holdings of bonds. that will reduce the value of them. So that's awkward. Um, I often debate this with people on social media and they come back. They're usually silent when I reply back to them. Once you've paid over 100 for something and you only get 100 back, then you have a problem. 
may come back on the idea of interest, and to some extent there's that, but there is this fundamental issue, particularly um, in late summer 2016, when the Bank of England charged in like headless chickens into the gilt market. It was paying 130, 140, I think 150 in some cases for these gilts, so there's a thing. Deeper than that is the issue of the economy these days, which again, younger people have no concept really in, in terms of a lot of areas of interest rates, do they? Not for savings. No. Mortgages are quite cheap. Yep. They do get an idea of it from student loans, ironically, which is a bit of a scandal. And then maybe if they go on to something like credit cards. So there's all sorts of numbers all over the shop, again, that need some element of sorting out. Well, it's outrageous, the credit cards. Yeah, they've actually, this is something I follow quite closely. Look, if you look back over the Bank of England record, you'd think, Bay, great base rate, whatever you call it, going from 4.5% to a half, credit card rates would go down. Oh no, they're up by about 2% over the same period. So all the effort has just sort of passed that by. Okay, let's wrap up. Give me one solution in anything you've talked about on your soapbox this morning. Okay, simple. Bank directors in future, there is a law brought in that you can be tried for gross negligence. I don't mean a mistake here, I mean gross negligence. Either a sequence of mistakes or something so dreadful it needs actual punishment. On that note, Sean, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.